Okay, so... Okay, hello, this is uh, Dr. Janes, and today I'm going to talk about uh, a device that I built to measure, uh, a simple device you could build also, to measure uh, shifts in time. Let's say you want to uh, do research on building a time machine, or uh, anti-gravity, that type of thing, and because uh, gravity is related to time, the changes in uh, gravitational potential will change the uh, rate that time uh, moves at. And other things do as well as I believe psychotronic energy also does. And um, so here, here's a simple little way. Uh, let, let's just look at what we got here. So um, here I have a crystal oscillator, and this is an 8 megahertz crystal oscillator. I need some more light over here. And uh, I have it hooked up to a power supply. So let me. Uh, turn the power. This is a 5 volt power supply. You want to be very careful not to uh, over volt this guy. And I have an O-scope here. And uh, what I did with the O-scope, okay, so there's a trigger on the O-scope. You can change where the trigger is. And I have it triggered. I don't know if you can see. It's way off to the side. So trigger position has been shifted way off to the side. Basically as far over as you can go. And so I had to scroll it, scroll it, scroll it way over there. So the, the time offset down here, see if you can see that, is uh, like 100, 100 milliseconds. So what's going on here is we have the crystal oscillator, and it triggers the oscope. So the, the crystal oscillator is like a clock. It's a very steady clock. It's a... Uh, steady at least on short time scales. It's this particular one uh, can be shifted with temperature so you got to be careful about that. Then we have the oscilloscope and it's got its own clock in there. So the oscilloscope starts and then it triggers and it just listens to the this oscillator run for a while and then it, it waits for so, so long and then it triggers again. And uh, you can see what the phase of the oscillator is uh, very precisely over, over uh, a delay of many many uh, clock cycles and um, so if I made this delay for too long or I, c I could change the uh, the uh, time scale setting it will become jumpy and if it's too short it will become not as accurate so I think that these these particular settings are pretty good and so what I'm going to do is uh, See, if you look at the uh, oscope, and I touch it here, this thing is so sensitive, all I have to do is touch it, and the heat from my, my finger causes a phase change in the, the crystal oscillator. And this is like parts per, per million change. And if you wait a while, it will go back. I was hoping to measure uh, psychotronic energy with it, but unfortunately the crystal oscillator seems to be very sensitive to heat, and this is a heat phenomenon, because if we take a soldering iron and bring it just close, you can also see a phase change. Of course, these aren't the effects that I'm looking for, so you want to be careful. You might be able to get a temperature compensated crystal that's not so sensitive to temperature. But anyway, just uh, I'm using a Regal DS-10 uh, 5.2e oscilloscope, but any digital oscilloscope can uh, do this trick where you can trigger and then just wait a long time so you can get a, a difference in phase. So I basically I triggered way off the edge and I'm looking, I'm triggering way over here, way off this, this edge over here, and then I'm waiting and looking way over milliseconds later to see how stable the uh, the clock frequency is, and that's how I'm able to see these tiny little shifts in phase. And so in principle, if you had something that was uh, producing a gravitational shift, you'd want to move the crystal into the field more and then have the oscilloscope be out of the field, and you could use that as a reference. And so anyway, here's the uh, here's our crystal. You know, better look at that. Yeah, I need some light on that. And uh, Anyway, there's the device, and it is very, definitely 
definitely very sensitive. All you have to do is touch it. Okay. Actually, I could get something cold. Maybe I'll get something cold and see if that has a reverse effect. Just wait one second. I'll go grab something. That's been in the freezer for a second. Okay. So here is a thermometer that I had in the freezer. And I touch it down there. And it shifts in the opposite direction. So it's definitely responsive to thermal, which is not the most desirable thing, but anyway, it should be sensitive to other types of shift too, if you can uh, get rid of all the uh, effects that you don't want. Anyway, so here's a neat little device that you might want to use for experimental research. This is Dr. Janes, and thanks for watching.